chondrules are tiny grains that formed in a protoplanetary disk during brief high temperature events. In these events, the chondrules are molten and, upon cooling, crystallized. Now, here's one chondrule in a backscatter electron image. This is the rough outline of this chondrule and it contains, as main minerals, olivine and pyroxene. So, these are larger clasts. Also, opaque phases like here, for example, might be metal or sulfide. And in between these porphyritic clasts is this grayish material, which is called mesostasis. It is calcium and aluminum rich and is mostly fine crystalline or glassy, indicating that the chondrules must have been quenched or at least fast cooled after the heating event. The chondrules are phosphate and site rich, a lot of magnesium, which means these are mafic systems. So if you want to understand the crystallization formation of the chondrules within these mafic systems, you can use phase diagrams such as this ternary phase diagram, diopside, anorthite, and phosphorite. Now here to the right are the um, corresponding binary phase diagrams, which form the sides of this ternary diagram. So for example, this diopside, phosphorite binary diagram here forms the bottom of the the bottom side of this ternary phase diagram. So chondrules are cellular mafic systems. So they usually start in the primary phase field of phosphide, for example here. So in the binary this would mean a chondrule might start here, then cool down, then um, so this is the bulk composition down here, then the melt develops the, down the liquidus to the eutectic, where diopside and phosphide crystallize. So in the ternary, this melt develops away from the phosphoride and now here hits this cotactic line where anorthite and phosphoride form. And then it develops down the cotactic to the eutectic, so this is anorthite phosphoride here, and then diopside joins the paragenesis. And this is basically the same for fractional crystallization, because if Phosphorite is removed all the time and it hits the cotactic. Then, at this point, phosphorite and the, um, anorthite again together start to crystallize down to the eutectic. So, there's no real difference. However, there's one um, special thing about this phase diagram, and this is the occurrence of spinel here. So, here's a spinel field. And this is a little bit curious because the edges of this ternary diagram are all silicates. Now, spinel is an oxide, so there's no silicon within the spinel, which means that the moment spinel forms, the melt becomes more silicon rich, and this is not shown here in this diagram. Now, to understand how this occurrence of spinel works, we look at this binary phase diagram, anorthite phosphoride. And we look at the, the axis here with, on, on the phosphoride side. Um, just at the temperature axis. And then we see that up here is everything's liquid, then in this field there's phosphoride plus liquid, then in this field there's phosphoride plus spinel plus liquid, and down here is anorthite plus phosphoride. And I will redraw this entire thing down here. So then what we are now doing, we're looking from this side onto the face side. So we're looking here to the face side, so on the edge of the temperature axis. So this is what we're doing here. And then we have this, these fields again, so there's the liquid, then there's phosphoride plus liquid, then there's phosphoride plus spinel plus liquid, and then there's phosphoride plus anorthite. So these are these fields from the binary phase diagram. Now I said if you start to cool down, I take a different color here, so if you start to cool down here, then first phosphoride will crystallize. So this is what's happening here. So cool down and phosphoride crystallizes. And then we're hitting this point upon further cooling. And here spinel starts to crystallize, which means the melt becomes more silicon rich. So we need an additional axis. At the moment we're looking on the phase diagram edge on. So you make a additional axis into this direction, which is SiO2. So what happens is when spinel starts to crystallize, 
the melt develops actually into this direction here and becomes more silicon rich. And then at some point during cooling, the spinel, because the, the melt is becoming more and more silicon uh, rich, the melt at some point um, starts to dissolve the spinel again and form forsterite. So this means this, this, the melt becomes less silicon rich down to this point at which there is no more spinel in the melt. So in this field here, this is basically the spinel stability field. And this is actually how it really looks like if you had, um, if you add quartz to, to the um, phase diagram here. And this is also sometimes, sometimes you can read that the, the spinel leaves the plane of this binary phase diagram here. And this is exactly what leaving the, the plane means because we're looking edge on this plane. So this is then upon cooling spinel crystallizing more and more and more spinel and then melt becomes more silicon rich and then at um, lower temperatures the silicon again or the, the spinel again dissolves and then at this point all the spinel is dissolved and only phosphide and anothide crystallize. And this is how this spinel field in the binary and in the ternary phase diagram works. So if there's, going back to the ternary, if there's a primary for the starting composition here, so then this, the melt develops away from force right, hitting this line here, here spinel starts to crystallize down to this point D. This is basically sort of some kind of peritactic reaction. And from here, every, all the spinel is dissolved, goes down to eutectic. Now, in this case, of course, there's a difference between equilibrium and fractional crystallization. Because during equilibrium crystallization, all the spinel will be consumed again. However, in fractional crystallization, some of the spinel might remain within the melt. Therefore, we can have still spinel grains within contours or any other melt, in terrestrial rocks, for example, um, remaining from this this reaction here. And this is why spinel occurs also in chondroids. And so this is quite a very helpful diagram, phase diagram, to understand the evolution of chondroids and the occurrence also of spinel.